I purchased an Apple Watch Series 3 back in 2018, and since then I really did wonder if there was anything that Apple was going to introduce that would make me change my mind and decide to buy an upgrade. Well, with the Apple Watch Ultra, they actually did. I've owned the watch for about two and a half months, and I want to do a very complete review of the watch itself, focusing specifically on the kind of extreme sports, and in particular scuba diving. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So first of all, wearing an Apple shirt. <laughs> this is of course the shape of their headquarters in California. So anyway, wanted to wear that today as I was doing a review. Anyway, I'm going to do a review of the Apple Watch and I'm going to look specifically at whether it's the perfect weekend Warriors watch. I did a preview of the watch before I actually owned it and said that this could be the perfect like weekend Warriors watch. Now, of course, Apple touts this as something for ultra marathon runners and you know mountain climbers, extreme climbers, things like that, scuba divers, etc. But really when you look at the watch, it's really oriented more towards a person like me who does a lot of different exercises and things, but only does things like scuba diving when you go on a vacation because I don't live near the ocean, only do mountain climbing like once or twice a year, only ski a few times, only rock climb a few times a year outdoors, and of course do a bunch indoors. So it's the kind of thing for somebody who's like more of an athlete than kind of the average person. And yes, of course, there is a category of extreme athletes who are very much professional athletes who might use this watch, but also also, there's a reason why a lot of them might not want to and might want to use more specific, more advanced tools. Anyway, I'm going to start with the unboxing I did back in mid-October, and then I'm going to do a review of the functionality of the watch, and I'm going to pay particular mind to scuba diving and the activity of that because that's really the like you know major, major feature of the Apple Watch Ultra that didn't exist in versions of the Apple Watch before. I will touch a little bit on the Apple Watch as a whole, but I'm really not going to focus on it that much. And of course, as part of the scuba diving thing, I will bring up reference to the Garmin Descent Mark II, which this is you know kind of competing with, and also my Scuba Pro Z1 dive computer that I've owned for several years. And as part of that, I will show you some recent footage of me diving off the coast of Oahu with this watch on. As the Apple Watch has been out for many, many years, I'm not going to focus in particular about all of the different features the Apple Watch has. Obviously, it does heart rate, it does things like ECG, but you can buy a Series 7 or a Series 8 and get the same kind of thing for like half the price. So the big question in my mind is, is this watch worth the $800 price tag and would I buy it again? All right, very exciting Apple Watch Ultra in its extra big box, jeez. And so if we undo it and flip it open, we get, oh, some images. Very cool. <laughs> Make you feel a little bit extra um, adventurous, I guess, looking at this. This is definitely better packaging than the regular Apple Watch, not that that's bad. But here we have the strap, so I guess the strap is separate. I got the green Alpine strap in the large size because apparently that will fit my wrist. And after we remove the tape so we can shake this open, ooh, ta-da, oh, and they even have the latitude longitude, very clever. I like that. So you can see this is not a, a, you know, a shy and retiring watch. This is a pretty, pretty big beast, but comes elegantly packaged. And like I said, we'll have to put the strap on. I'm not gonna try to do that one-handed while we're looking at this, but we will take a look at the watch and the pairing process and everything in just a moment. But in the meantime, that would be the packaging. Again, very elegant, shows mountains, very pretty. Alpine strap, I guess if you got the scuba diving strap, they would probably actually give you, ah, I just realized that. Probably they have like an underwater picture for the scuba strap and they have other pictures for other straps. But anyway, I'm gonna do this uh, and hopefully I'll be able to go scuba diving in just a few days to sort of show it off. I will have to use the Alpine strap for the scuba diving, but oh well, it should be fine if it gets wet. I don't think it's gonna cause a problem. All right, so anyway, packaging looks quite elegant and I'm super excited excited to see what happens. And of course, if we open this up, we have our charger. Ooh, pretty beefy. <laughs> USB-C, it's got a nicer cable. It's not just that plastic, but kind of a cloth textured um, charger. So it'll be interesting to see if this works with my other charger for my regular Apple Watch Series 3 or whether it's like a higher power charger and so it needs something else. So anyway, that's what comes in the packaging. I can't wait to try it out. We will see soon. So here you can see a size comparison directly with the Apple Watch Series 3, which is a little bit smaller than the Apple Watch Series 8. But anyway, you can see that the uh, Apple Watch Ultra is substantially larger, obviously, from, and obviously in the measurements, but also obviously from looking at the two of them together on wrist. 
Here you can see the bands that you have access to. So this is a uh, you know $15 version of the band instead of the real one from Apple. But basically this is the runner's band and it has this nice orange highlight, which I really like. It works well with the, with the orange highlights that are on the watch itself. So that's very, very cool. And here you can see the watch head just by itself. So you can see you know approximately what size it is by itself and all of the sensors on the back of course the sensor suite all of that kind of stuff and I believe that the pressure gauge is one of these holes I don't know which one it is <laughs> there's like three microphones and one of them is a pressure gauge so it could be microphone microphone and then maybe microphone is this one and then the pressure gauge is this one I'm not sure or maybe the pressure gauge is in between right here and maybe that's the microphone and there's two pressure gauges. I'm not exactly sure where the pressure gauge is on the Apple Watch Ultra, but definitely it's there. So you can see the back with the sensor suite. You can see the side. You can see the extra button that is given for just the Apple Watch Ultra, the sort of action button. And for me, that actually is to bring up the workout mode because that's what I use often enough. And so this is very, very you know advantageous when you're actually starting things up. It saves a couple of clicks just to be able to press this button real fast. And here we have the water band. Again, this is a uh, Chinese knockoff. It was about $17. I'll put a link to these in the description if you're interested. They're a lot less expensive, of course, than going with the uh, Apple versions, which are $100 each. Of course, you have to get one with the Apple Watch Ultra. But this was very, very, you know, this worked really, really well on the scuba diving trip and in Hawaii in general. It's got basic stuff. The one thing it doesn't come with that the Apple Watch uh, official band actually comes with is an extension strap. Now, I found this worked perfectly fine over a, a 3.2 millimeter wetsuit and probably would have worked fine over even up to a 7 millimeter wetsuit. But if you happen to be dry suit diving, then you're going to need to have the extra extension length. Honestly, if you're dry suit diving, I don't know why you would use this watch. <laughs> the likelihood is that you would want to use something a little more professional than this if you were dry suit diving. But anyway, if you wanted to, you would definitely, if you did want to do dry suit diving or if you have a very, very large wrist, you might want to check and you might want to go ahead and pay the extra money to get the Apple version because it has the extra extension strap if you need it. So here is the Alpine strap that I got with the watch. So this is the actual official Apple branded version. It's sort of the, the green one. You can see I've done, done a lot of climbing with it. <laughs> it's, got, it's got chalk stuff all over, chalk marks all over it. This is very, very secure. But one thing I don't particularly like is it's difficult to find the little slot to hook it into in the dark which is kind of ironic because it's an Alpine strap, right? So, you know, a lot of times you'd imagine you having to use this in the dark. But anyway, once you have this on, it is going nowhere. You could definitely use this for water and stuff like that as well. It certainly works. And it also has kind of a double locking sort of system because even if this comes out, you can see that you actually have to pull on this pretty hard to get it to go through the straps. So as you wear it, even if the Alpine strap, if the first line of defense came off, it would still be very difficult for it to actually, you know, pull through. And of course it's on a loop, so you would have to, a lot of things would have to go wrong for you to be able to lose this. So the Alpine strap is really, really good. The problem, the only problem that I have with it, honestly, is that the on and off motion is a little difficult because this guy, in, in the dark, it's really hard to tell where, where these things are. I almost wish that they had like little glow in the dark, you know, little nibs or something like that, or maybe you could put that on or something. But you can see it's just, you know, it's a little bit challenging to do that. So anyway, that's why I like the runner strap better on a general day-to-day -day basis. But anyway, if you're interested in any of these straps or honestly anything else, because you can use any of the straps from the original Apple Watch, these, I tested this out, it fits just fine. Now it doesn't look right because it's black on the side as opposed to this titanium look. But you know, as long as you don't care about that, you can use pretty much any strap from the larger Apple Watch sizes. They will fit on this and they will work. So that's actually very advantageous for the straps. So I've got this set to the Wayfarer view, and this is actually really, really cool. You know, you can set all of these things around the side to do whatever you want. You can see it's raining here right now, and you can see in Athens, that's what the weather, the, the, the forecast for the weather type thing is. You can bring up weather, you can bring up your events. There's nothing because it's New Year's Eve as I'm recording this. You can bring up your exercise history. All of that stuff is there. And then, of course, if you roll this forward, it goes into that cool night mode thing. And I've actually used this a few times. It's actually very nice. It, uh, it definitely keeps your eyes 
eyes from getting messed up. The one problem is if you hit something like the sunrise sunset, you can see how this goes back to the non-red thing. So you have to be careful not to do that. And then of course, if you roll it back, it goes like this. And then one cool little secret is I have this thing set so that if I push, whoops, if I push the outer ring, you can see that now it has elevation and also incline. So you can see that the incline actually changes as I rotate the watch around and you've got the altitude. One problem, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna nail Apple on this every single time. I have to say that I'm in US, um, uh, like I'm in the United States in order to use Apple Pay and a bunch of other features. And it forces you to use feet and other imperial measurements when you have the Apple Watch on this. Now that's ridiculous. You can see that I've got right here, I've got my temperature set to centigrade because that's what I use. And I, you know, I want to be able to do my workouts in metric because that's how I measure them. But I end up having to use something like Strava or something like that because I have to have this thing set in feet and miles, etc. For most people, that's probably not going to matter. And if you're any place besides the United States, it will default to metric, so it won't matter to you. But it's really, really annoying to me that that's the case. But anyway, you can see how simple it is to switch back and forth between these. One other UI criticism that I definitely have is that as the hour and minute hands pass over these complications, like right now it says Saturday the 31st, that they should go semi-transparent over this. So as they pass over, because inevitably, if I want to see what the temperature is, it seems like it's always a situation where the hand is directly over the thing that says 16 there. And that's super annoying. So why not have it as it passes over these things? It doesn't have to be the whole thing, but the portion of the minute and hour hand that are over that could just become semi-transparent so you can read through it just seems like a really, really no brainer kind of thing for them to have put in. I don't know why they haven't. <laughs> and you can see that you've got these nice big, uh, you know, alerts that pop up. So the screen is really, really huge. So that's the consequence of having such a big watch. But anyway, I got an Elon Musk tweet. So there you go <laughs> live as you watch this. And then of course you can set this side button to whatever you want. I have it set to workout. So it just pops open my workout things. And as far as what I've actually used my workouts for, I've done other, which is just a catch all. I've done outdoor walk, traditional strength training, climbing, surfing, nice, <laughs> hiking, Stair stepper, outdoor cycling, indoor cycling, outdoor running. Uh, I don't think I've done elliptical, haven't done indoor walk. I have not done that yet downhill skiing with this version yet. I definitely have done it with this version. But again, that's going to have it in imperial rather than metric, which is going to be super annoying. Done martial arts with it. I've done open water swimming with it. Have not done pool swimming with it. I uh, haven't done an indoor run. Haven't done a multi sport. Haven't done that, haven't done that. Uh, I've done Tai Chi also someplace down here, Tai Chi. So most of these exercises, what it says they are is actually kind of unimportant because what it says it does is it basically treats it like a, a brisk walk is what it says. So all of these things in general are kind of like treated like a brisk walk, but still it's cool to be able to like put in the different sports. But as you can tell, I've used this for a lot of different sports. It works great for all of them climbing. Uh, I've done a lot of rock climbing with it and it actually works pretty well for that and it doesn't scratch up. That was a big complaint that I had with this version. I had, you know, series one, series two, and series three, and this guy's got a couple of little dings in it from climbing. And so I stopped using it for that. This one so far hasn't. It's got a flat screen so you can see from the side how flat it is versus the way that this thing is from the side. It's much more rounded on the side. So, you know, it's much more dangerous in terms of it being able to be hit. Sorry about the numbers keeping popping up since, since I'm not wearing it right now. It's trying to get me to enter the passcode. But anyway, this thing seems much more robust. And of course, it's also got a sapphire crystal as well. Don't really want to test it out because it's rather expensive, but it has stood up to some dings and things. And of course, this is titanium as well. So with a strap on with these two things, you know, I, I know that they weigh a little bit different in terms of the official measurement, but they feel really close when I hold them in my hand. So even though this is substantially larger, this feels very, very similar in weight as well as the weight on the wrist. Now, the one thing is, of course, that it stands up much, much higher. And you can see how hard it is to put this on and off, right, with the Alpine strap. So you kind of have to do it this way, put it on, and then pull it tight. But you can see how, as I rotate my wrist around, this sits up really, really high compared to the other Apple Watch. So this is not exactly a stealth watch. This is not something you're going to do. You also can't get it in like black or something. It comes in this sort of titanium, goldish, silverish color. And so this is quite obviously kind of an attention-getting watch. It's not something... One of the things I really liked about this version of the watch is, especially in this space gray, black sort of color, is it really disappears. 
disappears. This thing is not, it's not a subtle watch at all. I expect future versions of the Apple Watch Ultra, they may decide to try to shrink it down a little bit. Mostly it's the height, but also I would appreciate it if they at least had an option to have one of these in black or you know, very dark color instead, so that it wasn't so obvious. All right, and then if you push in the crown, you can access all of these apps that you have, of course, that you can put on. You can do an ECG, which is really interesting. So this pops up, and what you do is you put your finger on this thing right here, hold your finger for 30 seconds. I'm not gonna do it for 30 seconds, but you can see how it's tracking my heartbeat there. It's gonna get mad at me because I didn't do it for 30 seconds. But anyway, so you have ECG. It constantly is monitoring your heart, which is really, really cool. Uh, this Duo thing is really useful for two-factor authentication, which I have for a bunch of apps, so that's actually really nice as well. And then if we scroll down, here's the Oceanic app. So when you push it, it gives you, it puts you in surface mode, and we can go into like scuba mode, and this is something that's super annoying because every single time before you go diving, you have to push this button. Inevitably, I forgot. <laughs> Even though I only dove six times while I was in Hawaii, by the time I got to like the fifth and sixth dives, I would forget to push this thing. So it's very, very annoying and Oceanic really needs to fix this. They need to like get rid of that thing. You should have to do it once, right? You should basically go like, yeah, 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 I agree. I'm, I'm not an idiot. I won't drown myself or something. You should only have to do that one time. You should not have to do it every time. But after you do that, it puts you in surface mode and you can see how you have a bunch of stuff. I'll show some underwater examples of this, but you can see dive time, no decompression limit, minutes to the surface. That's actually a useful thing. Uh, meters max depth. Again, I fortunately, this thing allows you to do things in meters, which is good because that's what I generally dive with. Um, and then, so your current depth, your max depth, the battery percentage, which is also important because it used about 10% of the battery per dive is what I found. So easily it can do, you know, five or six dives a day without needing to be recharged. That was my experience, at least. Cold water, I'm sure, would have an effect on it. It also has a compass, which is tilt-adjusted, so it stays accurate even though the watch is tilted this way. And so you can see as I move it around that it does that. So anyway, all of this is accessed through spinning the crown as you're underwater. And then, of course, you've got your gradient factors. And one thing that I will note is that your gradient factors are set by default to uh, very conservative numbers. So those things, I'm not going to tell you what you should set it for. For, but I will definitely tell you that my the Scuba Pro that I was diving with, which is my regular dive watch, dive computer that I use, was set to effectively negative one conservation factor on this thing, whereas the this only gives you the option of zero, plus one, and plus two. So it was very annoying that they did not give you the, the, the factor that you could put in yourself to go minus one or minus two. Anyway, you can also see that it's got air by default and any nitrox mix up to 50% and also the max PPO as well. 1.4, which is very standard stuff. And also notice that even as you use these different features, the top part stays the same. So your no decompression time and your current depth are always visible. And there's also a bunch of warnings. It's a little bit of a nanny. <laughs> it's always kind of flashing or beeping or thumping or something like that. It's really good. I wore this against my skin, but I'm sure even through the wetsuit, I would have felt it. It has very significant thumps against your skin when it's trying to tell you something like you're going up too fast or you're getting close to your no decompression limit or something like that. And then of course it will also scream at you if you start going up like really fast or something, right? So if you go up a little bit too fast, it thumps at you and tells you. If you start going up way too fast, it starts screaming at you. I'm sure if you got to you no know, decompression limit like zero or something, it would, you know, start making noise. I didn't get to that point because I didn't really want to. But anyway, so it does it does a lot of really cool things, but it's also a little bit too conservative for my taste. And it's super duper annoying that you have to push that thing that says I'm fit to dive every single time because it's super easy to forget about that. And I do have this set to automatically start this when I go into the water. The other thing to note is as with any water sport kind of thing, you have to hold the crown down, hold, 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 and then you can hear it doing its thing. So before you can interact with the watch as a regular watch, again, you have to do that for a few seconds. And what it does, is it spits out all the water and stuff. The other really huge thing I hate about the Oceanic app is the fact that it's a subscription basis rather than a purchase basis. So I bought one month for $10, which isn't super bad, but the problem is that every time I wanna go diving, I'm gonna have to remember to start it and I have to remember to stop it since I only dive you know, like twice a year. I don't really wanna pay for this every single month since I only need about two months worth 
of diving. So anyway, it's very annoying when it comes to that kind of stuff. But it does have a lot of really nice features. It's got the no deco planner. It's got a log book. It's got settings, etc. The settings, of course, is where you can set all of this kind of stuff like metric and all of that. But also you can set your dive mode to scuba. You can set your scuba stuff, your conservatism, your gas. If you want to go to nitrox, you can set your, your O2 limit. You can set your alarms, all of that kind of stuff. But again, as I said, if you go into the gradient factors, it only gives you zero plus one and plus two, which is too conservative for my taste. So anyway, this is, is you know, that those are the annoying things. This is a 1.0 software. It just barely came out before uh, I went to Hawaii. So thank goodness it did that because I really wanted to test it out. But it's really nice. And the logbook is actually very cool. So let's look at the last dive I did. So you can see the dive profile here. You can see the dive time of 40 minutes. You can see the max ascent rate was 22 meters per minute. The water temperature was 24 centigrade. The max depth with 14 meters. I was scuba diving with air, you know, custom gradient factors, PPO2. Dive altitude was two meters, basically sea level. And then I can even view the map inside the watch. The one problem with that, well, this is actually better. On the app, on the phone instead, it actually shows it so close up that it just shows water, which is silly. But I don't know if I can zoom in with this or not, but <laughs> let's see. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So you can zoom in with the crown. So you can see that I was just off the coast of Honolulu, which is exactly where it was. And here, just showing a little more extreme dive profile, right? So here we're getting down to about 32 meters, basically. So 25 minute dive time, max set rate, 24 meters per minute, water temperature the same, max depth was 31 and a half meters. And then you can also view the map here. And so you can see, that this was slightly different place. We had to go out to the wreck, so it's a little bit deeper water. So anyway, that's all the features with Oceanic. It's really good, I really like it, except that it's a little bit too much of a nanny, it's a little bit too conservative, and I really don't like to have to push the button before every single dive. They really need to disable that one, or at least optionally allow you to do that. And then, of course, I really, really don't like the subscription basis. I think that that is very annoying. But the app itself works really, really well, and it was great, and the watch was super robust, no problems at all with diving. It worked great, and you know, 31 and a half meters is getting close to that 40 minute meter dive limit that this thing has for operating, but it did it, did it no problem. All right, so you've seen what comes in the box, you've seen a bunch of the features, you've seen how I can use it for scuba diving, etc. So the question now is, what is my review of the watch overall? Well, the watch has a number of different exercise modes, which are really, really cool, and I've used a lot of them from, you know, basic things like strength training to surfing to Tai Chi. I haven't used it for martial arts. I don't know how this would particularly do with punching and stuff. That seems like a, a kind of a violent motion to have a watch on. I generally, if I was doing martial arts, would not have a watch on anyway. But you could, of course, use it for martial arts if you really wanted to. But anyway, most of those exercise things kind of are treated as a brisk walk. At least that's what it tells you. So it's not giving you a ton of particular things. One of the disappointing aspects is when you use it for climbing, it doesn't seem to give the, the, the vertical distance that you've traveled, which seems very odd. Now, I haven't done multi-pitch climbing climbs outside with this, so maybe it just needs to be able to go up multiple hundreds of feet and then it will start to register that, but I do find it a little disappointing that it doesn't have that sort of metric that it tracks. It would be really nice to be able to say like, oh, today I climbed, you know, 600 vertical feet or something like that. That would be very, very cool. But anyway, for all of these sports, it has turned out to be tougher than I expected. At the beginning, you know, it's one of those things where after owning the kind of sport version of the watch with the crystal bezel, I was afraid about this, but the fact that this is titanium and has a uh, sapphire bezel as opposed to a crystal bezel means it's been very tough. It hasn't scratched at all. I am worried, of course, you know, titanium is not that particularly strong, so I am worried about getting scratches around the edge of it, but, you know, that'll just give it character over time. But as far as the crystal is concerned, I've grown to become accustomed to it enough that I use it all the time for climbing and, like I said, for surfing and things like that. Probably wouldn't do big wave surfing with that when I was, you know, likely to get tossed and churned around. And I'm not going to do big wave surfing anymore anyway because I'm way too old for that. But anyway, for the little stuff, you know, that was there at Waikiki Beach and everything, perfectly fine. It was really lovely. It was great to be able to keep track of time because, of course, I was renting the board for a couple of hours, so I didn't want to keep it too long. So it was really nice to be able to see that. I could have used an old Junker watch instead, which is what I normally do, but it was really nice to be able to track the exercise and all of that. And you get a lot of calorie credit when you do surfing.
But of course, the big question in my mind, the thing that put me over the edge for purchasing this watch at $799 was the scuba diving part of that. And that is that this is rated to 100 meters depth and 40 meters as a dive computer. So the watch itself is rated to 100 meters, but the dive computer part is only rated to 40 meters or 132 feet. That just so happens to be the recreational dive limit. That's like as far as you're supposed to be allowed to go under the surface. So clearly this is set up as a recreational dive computer, not a professional dive computer. So, you know, the Scuba Pro Z1 has four gas mixes. It has a lot of features that I wouldn't even use because I'm not a technical diver or anything. I'm very much a recreational diver. So in terms of the depth and the rating and all of that stuff, this worked really, really well. In terms of the durability, it had no problems whatsoever. I dove it. I actually ended up giving my dive master my other computer, my Z1, because she managed to forget her computer on the first day that I went diving. But anyway, I wanted to take both of them because number one, I wanted to compare them. And number two, I wanted to make sure in case this thing failed on me that I had another dive computer that I trusted. So of course on the first dives, I actually had the Z1 with me with the dive master. Of course that, you know, changes things and technically I shouldn't be diving without the computer, but I did have one. So anyway, it was just a backup anyway, but it turned out that that computer, the Z1 was much less conservative than this one. And so as I noted before, I had to do a custom conservation algorithm. I found it a little annoying that the Oceanic Plus app wouldn't do negative conservation factors by default default, you had to put it in manually, which is not as good. I mean, it's not that difficult to figure out, but again, I'm not going to tell you guys how to do that because that's up to you and I don't want to be responsible for this. And of course you need to be certified scuba diver and all that kind of stuff before you even utilize this for scuba diving. But anyway, I found it annoying that the, the default conservation factor was lower than the scuba pro Z one. And then you couldn't set it to negative as well. But I did find something that worked pretty much exactly as the scuba pro Z one's algorithm worked. And if you don't know, of course, it's just running a thing. It's just taking the depth all the time. It's like, what is the depth? And it's running it through a computation thing with like 12 or 16 compartments. I think it's 16 compartments. It models the human being. Anyway, that's the topic for a whole other video. But there are conservation factors that are added that sort of tweak that algorithm. So for instance, if you're not that healthy or you haven't dove in a long time and you want to increase the conservation, it will actually dial it down. So it will give you less bottom time, things like that. But also in response to that, it should also have negative conservation factors, which allow you to say, like, I am healthy. I know what I'm doing. And, you know, I want to set it so that I can stay down longer. So anyway, it was annoying that it had the plus conservation, but not the negative conservation. And you had to do that by hand. And while I wasn't able to dive nitrox there because the company I was diving with, which was great, by the way, Kaimena Divers was great in Oahu. But anyway, they did. They don't do nitrox. It requires a lot of equipment to be able to do nitrox. So anyway, they don't do that. But I dove with air, but you can dive with nitrox, I believe, up to 50 percent. I mean, pretty much nobody dives is above 32%, but you can easily dial it in. So you can set your nitrox percentage to whatever you want it to be. And of course you have to be nitrox certified to do all that kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, it can easily do that. You can very easily change it on the watch. Interestingly enough, the Oceanic app on the phone does not let you change any of these settings. You have to do it on the watch. So that's an interesting little wrinkle. And that actually brings up a really huge advantage that the Apple Watch has over the Garmin Descent. And that is the incredibly tight integration between watch and phone. So obviously this will not work if you're an Android user because it's dialed in for the iPhone. But if you're an iPhone user, you're going to find the integration between any Apple Watch and the iPhone to be better than any other tool and the iPhone. So that gives a huge advantage. That's the major advantage of having the Apple Watch. And of course, as someone who's used the Apple Watch since the Series 1 way back in the day, was that 2014 or 15? something like that. Whenever it came out, I'm very much used to having an Apple watch with me all the time. And so it was really, really wonderful to just have this watch and not have to bring along a separate watch to go diving and all of that kind of stuff. So this, you know, it really is a do it all watch. I could do anything I wanted to. I went surfing while I was there, went on a helicopter ride while I was there. That wasn't exercise, but I'm just saying the watch was able to, you know, handle that kind of environment, easily able to do scuba diving, mountain climbing, rock climbing. I will go skiing later this winter and it will handle handle that no problem because any of the Apple watches can do that. So it can handle that and it's all incredibly tightly integrated with the phone. And that actually is really cool. In fact, actually, while I was in Hawaii, it actually gave me an alert that my heart rate had gone up. I 
I don't know why it went back down again when I got back home. But anyway, for whatever reason, when I was in Hawaii, my heart rate was like a, the resting heart rate was a little bit higher than it normally is. And so it actually alerted me and said that that was an issue. I've had a couple of times, including recently when we did our sort of Christmas party thing, we were very, very loud doing it. And I got an alert on the watch that said like, this is dangerously high levels of sound. It said something like, don't stay in this level of sound for more than a half an hour. So, you know, so it gives you the alerts when it needs to. It's very proactive. I really, really like it as an integrated part of the phone. And I think it's really wonderful. And that now takes me to the Oceanic Plus app, which is this guy on the phone right here, Oceanic Plus app. Anyway, you have to run this app in order to go scuba diving with the watch. In other words, it's not something that Apple has designed themselves and built in themselves. Themselves, and that uh, there's some issues with that. Now, the application itself is generally good. The phone app is good. The watch app is generally good. There's a lot of good stuff with this, but a big problem was that the Apple Watch Ultra came out several months before the Oceanic app came out. In fact, the Oceanic app only came out maybe two weeks before we left for Hawaii, and I was starting to get rather stressed about that because I was like, geez, I really, really want to, you know, one of the reasons we were going to Hawaii was specifically so that I could go diving with this watch and test it out. And so I was like, I am I going to get there and not have access to this application to be able to test it out? So that means that Apple has sort of given up the ability to control their own destiny when it comes to the dive watch app part of it, and they've given it over to Oceanic. Now, the Oceanic app, you can set it so that as soon as you jump in the water, it immediately does that, and that's actually very useful. But if you have it set to scuba diving mode, you have to push a button before it will actually go into scuba diving mode and start recording. It's very annoying. It's one of those things that like you're, you're getting ready to go in the water and you know you're, you're getting all set and you jump in and you start descending and then you look at your watch because you want to see how deep you are and it's like push this button to agree that you're fit enough to go diving and it's like why can I not just do that once that should only have to be done one time I should like agree to that you know, when I first set up the onboarding on the phone and on the watch. So I should have to do that one time, not every single time. That's really, really annoying. Now, I, I did forget a couple of times it got halfway down, you know, the, the descent rope. And it seemed like when I pushed the button that it immediately, it had been tracking things in the background. It just wasn't displaying them yet. So I think, you know, even if you forgot to look at your watch for the first five minutes of the dive or something like that, I believe that it would be recording that, but it's very disturbing to already be mid dive and go like, oh crap, <laughs> you know, it's not working right now. So that that's something that really needs to be addressed by Oceanic. The other part of this that I really don't like is the fact that Oceanic is charging a subscription fee. You can't purchase the app. So I think it's $5 for a day, $10 for a month, which is what I paid, or $80 for a year. But you have to pay that every year. And if you think about $80, that's, that's basically 10% the cost of the watch. Every year that you own it, you're paying to have that application. Now, given the fact that I only usually go diving like twice a year, I'm going to get two months. So it'll cost me $20 a year as opposed to $80 a year. But still, it's, it's rather annoying that I have to pay for an application as a subscription over time if I want to use it. Now, of course, this being an Apple product, they make it super ridiculously easy to do that. You know, you just basically click a button and it does it. And to their credit, when I got back from Hawaii, I said I wanted to cancel it. It was very, very easy. It just takes me to that to the iPhone subscription thing. I push on that, say cancel it. It says, are you sure? It says you'll be able to use this up to like a month from when you purchased it. So very, very simple to turn it on and off. And I approve of that. I hate those things where you like, you know, you get an application, a subscription, and you can't figure out how to disable that or how to cancel that subscription. So I will give Apple and Oceanic, you know, the credit for making it very easy to be able to disable that as well. But still, it's annoying. I would rather at least have a basic dive walk functionality built into the iPhone. I mean, Apple engineers, they have plenty of talented engineers. There's Python and C++ and I'm sure C code, things like that. There's plenty of, of, of code that already exists out there that does these algorithms, that does the Bullman Z16 or whatever it is. Anyway, it does those algorithms. I've even looked in, into them myself. I was actually honestly thinking the Oceanic app was so delayed that I thought about doing it myself, but then I 
decided I really didn't want to be responsible for killing myself by having the, the wrong algorithm or something like that. So anyway, I didn't decide to do that, but it is something that Apple's engineers could definitely do. And in my opinion, they should build in a basic scuba diving application. Now they have a basic snorkeling app. It will track your, your or I guess if you're free diving or whatever, but anyway, it will track your time underwater and the maximum depth and all of that kind of stuff, but it won't do the scuba diving aspect. And I, I really feel that Apple should have a basic one that just doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. And then if you want to pay for the extra stuff, because the Oceanic app has log books, it has social media kinds of things. It has like find a dive spot. It has a bunch of bells and whistles that are very, very nice. But I strongly believe that Apple should have their own basic scuba diving application in there that keeps track of basic stuff. And of course, that would also have alleviated the problem of them depending on Oceanic to come out with this app. And they didn't come out with it at the time the Apple Watch came out. So that would have alleviated that whole problem. And the final thing about the Oceanic app that I'm not particularly pleased about is it's a little bit too much of a nanny app. Again, very, very conservative by default, and you can't set it to be less conservative without going in and editing it manually. You can't pick like a negative one or negative two. It's also, you know, it's expensive because you have to do a subscription, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. And then it's a little bit on the overly like active front. So it does things like thumping on your wrists and stuff, and it's very, very strong. I will say on the positive end, there was no question. I was wearing it against bare skin, but even if I'd been wearing it over my wetsuit, I would have definitely felt the thumps. And the Color screen was a big revelation. It was so nice to be able to read the screen more easily. My Scuba Pro Z1 is like an old LCD thing, black and white, and it's very difficult to read sometimes if the angle isn't right. And so it was really lovely to be able to see how bright this thing was. And of course, to see things like yellow when you got to your safety stop and it's flashing and telling you that you're at your safety stop and yellow is kind of a caution color. And then on the first dive, when I got really close to the no decompression limits, it turned from yellow to orange to red. I think it was orange orange to red. It's hard to tell at that depth, but I believe it was actually like, maybe it was just red. But anyway, it went to something where it was more actively telling me to pay attention and it turned red. And then if you go up too fast, right, if you start to ascend too quickly, it will also turn red. So it's very nice to have those color coded things. It gives you an immediate like, oh, it's red bad. <laughs> you know, I should probably pay attention to this and do something about it. And the thumping on the wrist is good. And again, if you ascend too quickly and ignore the thumping part, it will actually scream at you. It'll set off an, an audible alarm as well. So it's really good with that. I really think that the app itself is very good, but it also feels like 1.0 software. There's just things where it's a little bit too much of a nanny. It's not quite aggressive enough in terms of its algorithm. It requires that stupid button press before you're allowed to access the functionality. So I, I'm hoping that version you know, 1.1 of this software will be substantially better and the next time I go diving, the app will be better. And that is a nice feature of this is that you get upgrades also, right? So that's a big thing. So as far as this versus the Scuba Pro Z1 is concerned, once I dialed in the conservation factor to my liking, I really appreciated this much more than that. This feels like a modern dive computer, not the Scuba Pro Z1. Not that I have anything against it. It's a tool. It does great, but it's much harder to read. It's much smaller, the display. This thing's got plenty of room. It's very, very big, as the images will indicate, and I really, really like that. The bigger question is, how does this stack up against the Garmin Descent Mark II? Now, I haven't used it. I have worn the Garmin descent, but I have not used it for scuba diving. If anybody wants to send me one, I'll be happy to like test them out together because I could always go down to Florida and I could actually like, you know, wear one on each wrist <laughs> so I could do a head to head comparison. But as far as I understand it, you know, looking at the specs, the descent Mark II has a smaller screen than this a little bit. Now it's round, so it's a little hard to judge exactly, but, but it's a little bit smaller screen. It's very, very bright. It looks really good. You're not going to get the integration with the iPhone that you will get with the Apple Watch Ultra, but the Garmin Descent Mark II does have air integration, which the Apple Watch Ultra does not. Now, I've never used air integration, and if you don't know, it's a little transmitter that you stick on the back of the tank, and it tells you how much air is left back in the tank. So basically, it does the calculation of like, is the no decompression limit gonna tell you you have to go up first, or is the running out of air gonna tell you you have to go up first? So it, it's one less thing to think about. It tells you everything, so you don't have to constantly be looking at your pressure gauge to see how much pressure you've got left. Now, I've never in 30 years 
years plus of diving. I've never used uh, the air integrated stuff. And so it's not something that I miss. And of course, when you're doing kind of recreational travel diving, it's not really something most people bring along with them. So, you know, it's just not that kind of a thing. But if you're way into air integration, you're going to have to go with a solution like the Garmin Descent Mark II. If you don't care about that, I think this is actually a better watch, again, for recreational divers. It will do decompression for you if need be, but it won't operate below 40 meters. But of course, for recreational divers, you're not supposed to go below that. I have this feeling that if you got below 40 meters, it would probably yell at you or something, but it would probably continue to function for at least a couple more meters. So there's probably a buffer built in there somewhere. But anyway, you know, if you're a super extreme diver or something like that, you're definitely going to want to, going to, want to get the Garmin Descent Mark II. Instead, it's going to be a more extreme type of diver or a Sherwood or something like that. You're probably going to want to get like a real tool watch thing. So this is definitely designed much more for the recreational diver, but that is who most of the divers are. And the big, big difference is you get the Apple Watch Ultra with all of its integration with the iPhone and all all of the nice features and all of the other stuff that you get and it's in titanium and it's 800 bucks as opposed to the Garmin Descent Mark II all by itself which is 12 to 1300 dollars depending on where you go and then of course if you want the air integration it's another like 600 dollars so so anyway you know I'm not going to count the air integration because that's not apples to apples <laughs> but anyway the difference between the Apple Watch Ultra and the Garmin Descent is a lot of money and you get a lot of watch with this watch so you know unless you have a very specific reason or of course, if you have Android, in which case I don't know why you're watching this review anyway. But but anyway, you know, in those cases, you have to buy something like the Garmin Descent. But if you are just a recreational diver and you're considering that, my opinion is that this is great, especially now that the Oceanic Plus app is out and you don't have to worry about that anymore. I think this is a really ideal solution. The rubber band that I got for diving as opposed to this Alpine band, and I got that off Amazon. I'll leave links to all of those bands in the description if you want to save some money off the Apple watch bands because they're very, very overpriced. But anyway, you know, the, the watch itself and the bands and all of that kind of stuff worked really, really well. I had no problem with it whatsoever. It seems very robust. And so I think that this is a really, really good option and it will save you a bunch of money over buying a Garmin Descent. So now let's talk battery. So this watch has a much, much more robust battery than any of the thinner Apple watches. One of the biggest reasons it's so thick. I'm sure the other reason is because it's waterproof to 100 meters, but also it's much thicker because it has a much bigger battery. I have used it for two days without thinking about it at all. It generally charges up to 75% to conserve battery. So it kind of does this thing and it shows a little like pointy part. And what you can do is click on that and then it'll charge it up the rest of the way. But generally speaking, after like a week or two of wearing it, it figures out approximately how much you use per day and when you charge it and then it optimizes how much it charges up so that you don't wear out the battery too fast. So I appreciate that very much. Now, I have put it in low power mode a few times and it really does reduce the amount of power that it uses. Supposedly, you can go for, I think, 72 hours or something along those lines, like three days. I'm not positive that it would be able to go that long, but I've definitely run it two days with exercising and all of that kind of stuff. Now, it's pretty low at that point, but you can definitely get two days out of it. As for scuba diving, it's a little hard to tell exactly, but I think it used about 10% per dive. Now, you know, you've got different depths, you've got different water temperatures, you've got different lengths of time you're staying underwater, but that was like the average across the dives was somewhere around 10% per dive. So even if you were on like a live aboard dive boat and you were doing six dives per day, as long as you had it charged up in the morning, it should be able to do a complete day of six dives and still have enough battery power that it's no big deal. And then of course you just plug it in at night and it will recharge overnight and you can use it the next day. So it should be able to do that without any problem whatsoever. Although obviously if you're going diving, you probably also, I don't think it can be a low power mode for one thing, but if you're going scuba diving, you probably also don't want to be doing it in like explorer mode and trying to get three or four days of battery and go diving out of it. That's like incompatible with the two. But as far as I could tell, it, it used not that much battery power for being underwater for periods of time. So that was actually really good to know. I didn't, you know, I would have been concerned if it had used like 30% of the battery with every dive, but it seemed much more like about 10% of the battery per dive. And so at no point did the watch get anywhere close to being run out of juice. Of course, that was only with two dives per day, but I was also wearing it and doing everything else. So it didn't have any issues. And when I did put it in low power mode for a day or two, just to check it out, it really, really reduced the amount of power 
power. It doesn't it doesn't do a, a lot of the bells and whistles that it normally does, but it looked like you could easily make three plus days with the watch in low power mode. Now, is that a full expedition? If I went back to Everest base camp, would I be able to do the two week trek without needing to bring a charger along? Absolutely not. I would have to do that. But you know, in general, under most circumstances, you're going to have access to something like a battery or some sort of electrical power supply. You'll be able to charge the watch every few days. So again, unless you're doing some really extreme expedition, it's going to be fine. You just charge it up when it needs to be charged up and it lasts a lot longer than the standard Apple watches. So that's really, really great. And then finally we get to aesthetics. So this is not a small watch. This is not a hiding kind of watch. <laughs> you can see this thing is thick. I don't know if I can get this in focus, but anyway, this is a very thick watch. It's titanium, it's very bright. It's not something that's going to hide. One of the things I really liked about my Apple Watch Series 3 was it was black. It had that rounded sort of uh, face on top of it. And it was something that was just like a stealth watch. You could wear it and nobody would really notice that you were wearing that watch because I had it in space gray, like a blackish color with a black band. So it very much just hid on me. This watch is not that. This is very much a like in your face kind of watch. You can see it's really thick. So aesthetics wise, you are definitely going to be making a statement when you wear this watch. And of course, it's even got orange on the back orange on the front. So, you know, it's definitely one of those things where you're not, <laughs> this is not something that you're going to be hiding. I have grown very used to it and pretty much all my other watches, including my Omega Seamaster Pro 300, seem kind of minuscule compared to this now. So this seemed very, very big. It's 49 millimeters, you know, from, from here to here. So it seemed really, really large at the time, but it, it wears super light. It wears the same, it's basically the same weight as my Apple Watch Series 3, which is much, much thinner, but the two of them weigh with and just a few grams of each other. So this thing weighs super light because it's got titanium and it's got a sapphire crystal. So it's really, really light. So as far as the wearing is concerned, it's, it's really, really convenient and nice. And I wear it every day. I basically don't wear any other watch anymore, but it's certainly not something if you're wearing a business suit where you're gonna be able to tuck it under a collar subtly. <laughs> it's gonna be something that's gonna stand out. So, you know, take that into account as you're thinking about this watch. If you're really, really all about wearing suits and everything and the watch has got to be super thin and very elegant. This is probably not the watch for you, but honestly, this watch is more targeted towards people who conceive of themselves as athletes. Whether or not we really are or not, it's kind of pitched that direction. So it's one of those things where you're going to kind of want to stand out. You're going to want to be like, hey, look at me. I'm like an athlete. I can do all of this stuff. So that it, with that aesthetic in mind, it actually does work. And I really, really love the runner's band that I have that has the orange accents on it. It's very poppy. I really, really like that. So aesthetically, at the beginning, I was not as married to this as I was to the original Apple Watch, but over time, I've really gotten used to it. All right, and the final verdict is, would I purchase this again at $800 if I, you know, if I had to do this all over again? I absolutely would. I think the proof is in the pudding. Since I've gotten this watch, I've got watches that cost thousands of dollars that I haven't worn like I've worn like once <laughs> for a special occasion since I bought this watch two and a half months ago. I'm going to Las Vegas to the Consumer Electronics Show tomorrow. I will be taking this watch with me. So, you know, that's what's, it's, it's the watch that I am now like married to. I'm living with this watch. Sure, it might be a honeymoon phase, but two and a half months is a long time. And I would have thought I would have become bored of it if not for the fact that it's a really, really good watch. So was it big when I first got it? Yes. Was to, Did it take a little while to get used to? Yes. As far as the weight, the wearability, everything, I really, really like it. I personally like the runner's band the most. It's the easiest one just flat out because I can put it on in the dark without having to look at it. It's annoying to have to do these straps and have to pay attention to it. So, so the runner's band is my favorite, even though I've got the Alpine band on right now. But aesthetically, battery-wise, the range of things it can do, and in particular, the fact that it's also a really good scuba diving computer, means that there is no way that I would want to give up this watch, and I would purchase it all over again if I had to. All right, so those are my thoughts on the Apple Watch. Hopefully they are useful to you if you are looking at purchasing one and considering getting the Ultra versus the other options, you know, the Apple Watch Series 7 or 8. Yes, it is rather expensive, but honestly, for what you get out of it, if you're gonna use it for all of those things, and in particular scuba diving, I mean, just a regular basic scuba diving watch is like 700 bucks right now. So you kind of get like a free watch, <laughs> you know, and the Mark II is way more expensive than that. It's 12 or $1,300. So, so, you know, this is like less expensive than lots of modern scuba diving watches and you get all the Apple Watch on top of that. So I think it's a complete no-brainer if you're a scuba diver that's a recreational scuba diver. And even if you're not, if you're like a runner, mountain climber, surfer, whatever, any of those kinds of things, 
I would actually purchase it myself, even without the scuba diving. But I think the scuba diving is what puts it over the top. At least it was for me. I said, well, I've got to buy that watch because that's what I've been waiting for. I wanted something that was waterproof and would be a good scuba diving computer on top of that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did enjoy it, please do like it because that's how YouTube knows to tell other people about the video. And of course, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, please do consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. And of course, if you wanna become a member of the team, just check out the link in the description. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.